for for the different types i mean i'm thinking you know in sandwiches and salads but knowing you you'll have additional ideas too no nope, those are my ideas <laughs> i just <laughs> i eat them because I, I eat huge salads every day and so i put these in my salad these are you wouldn't cook these you know so yes. you just eat them raw yes. um it would be a waste of their you know their freshness to to steam them down and then uh, nutritional value as well yeah stuff. right because these are extremely nutritious i mean you can see they're just just packed in there and it's so easy to do so i'm getting a few more people are here let me see i'm gonna um i gotta take a look here Exit full screen. Ah, she wants to know what the meeting ID is. Hello. Hello. Who's there? It's Betty. Do you have my video or just audio? Is this Betty Hedgefan? Yes. Okay, so you're on here. I just was looking at your video and I mean your email and looked like you needed some. Yeah, I figured out the last end of it was the ID. So. Yeah. Normally, all you have to do is just click the link and it goes there. But anyway, I'm okay. glad you made it. I've been doing a lot of Zoom meetings and they're probably all different. <laughs> Go figure. I I have no idea why. So um, let's see. I'm going to put this on. So in case you haven't gotten familiar with it up on the top right hand corner you can choose what view you want so you can put it on gallery view where you can see everybody well you can't i mean depends on how many people are on the call but if you do that then you can see everybody who's here right now there's 11 of us and um but you can also put it on speaker view and then you'll see whoever's speaking which happens to be me at the moment, but it will switch back and forth to whoever's speaking. And then you'll just see a smaller um, thing about the speakers. Okay, I think I see most people now. Yeah, okay, so it's up to you to decide how you wanna do that. And in a little bit, I'm going to share my screen so that I can show you the video of the step-by-step -step process of getting from nothing to this amazing crop of the most delicious, nutritious food in the world. It's so great. So how many of you have um, grown microgreens before yourself? Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put it on gallery view. So why don't you just raise your hand, like physically raise your hand if you've done it, so we can see. Okay, Susan, Betty, Mary. I have two, Delisa. Oh, Anne, okay, okay. And how many of you have had good success doing it? Okay. Not me. Okay. <laughs> some of you have had good success, some not. All right. So um, I got an email from somebody who was responding to my email saying that she's been using um, a kit type of thing, which is a real simple way to do it. Uh, I think it was called Halama. Let's see, Gail. Hi, Gail. Um, but you know that is the simpler way, but it's also more expensive than doing it this way. So you know you have your choice. So either way, you're going to get wonderful results. So still more few people showing up. I see Matt Anderson is here. I can't see Matt, but his computer's here. Hi, Matt. All right. Amy's iPhone. Okay, Linda. All right, we're 15 people on. That's great. Hey, hey Bob. I got it going on my phone. Okay. So um, when you're not talking, if you can just mute yourself, which most of you probably know how to do, um, you have a couple of choices. You can do it down at the the bar at the very bottom on the left hand side it says mute or you can go up to your own um, where your own picture is and you can mute and unmute yourself so as long as you're just muted um, we don't hear any background sounds if your washing machine's going or your dog is barking or whatever 
Um, but then when you want to talk, you have to remember to unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. So, so what I'm planning to do today is I'm just kind of showing you what the, the present situation is here, which I'm going to show you how I harvest in a little bit. But I want to go back to the beginning, which was 10 days ago, and show you how I got everything started. So the plan is I'm going to share my screen and play the video that Charlie and I made this week. And um, Charlie apologizes for having some out of focus um, pictures. They eventually get in focus, but it's not up to the real standards. So anyway, but it'll give you the idea of what it takes to um, so I think I, uh, oh yeah, I see you found the chat. There's, okay, very good. All right, so I'm going to put this on screen share. And this video is actually 18 minutes, which seems a little long, but I actually go through exactly, exactly, exactly what you need to do. And this will be recorded, so you don't have to like make much of everything. But I wanted you to see exactly how to do this yourself. Okay, I'm going to do the screen share. Let's see if I can. Somebody needs to mute yourself. I'm hearing something in the background. Needs to mute herself. I'm not seeing this video yet. Can you see the video? Yeah, we can see and hear it. Hi, I'm Delisa. I'm going to show you how to plant your own microgreens. They're really easy to grow, so please don't be afraid, even if you've never planted anything before. And it's great to have them because from the time you plant them till the time you can eat them is only about 10 days. So this is just a really fun thing to do. So in order to do it, you need to have some supplies. So the first thing you need is something to plant in. And these are 10 by 20 inch planting containers that you can buy at any kind of any place where they sell garden supplies. So I have two kinds of trays here. One of them has holes in it. On purpose the other one does not have holes in it and I'm gonna nest the one with the holes inside of the other one and that's so that when I water the excess water can run through the holes and collect in the bottom tray so you also need some kind of soil and you're gonna fill up the so this is the same thing as this. This is two trays nested. And I filled this up. My, I'm using Pro Mix, which is a planting mixture, but you don't need that. You can use any kind of potting mix that you want. You can only use it one time, and it doesn't need to have all kinds of um, wonderful fertilizer in it or compost because you can only use it one time, and then all of this is going to be filled up with roots, and so you can't reuse it. Okay, so you've got your container, you need some kind of soil, and then of course you need some seeds. Now you can grow lots of different things, but I grow three different things. One of them is, um, it's a salad mix. And I'm gonna show you, these are little tiny seeds, and it's a mixture of different things like um, kale, cabbage, collards, Swiss chard, arugula, um, might be some others in there. And it's a whole big mix. And I buy them from a place called True Leaf Market. And I can, you can buy it in these little one pound bags. And this one's called spicy salad mix. This one's called basic salad mix. I've tried them both and I can't tell the difference. <laughs> so, 
whatever you get would be just fine. And one pound doesn't seem like much, but it lasts for a really long time because it only takes about one tablespoon to plant this whole tray. And that makes quite a lot of greens. So besides the salad mix, I plant two other kinds of seeds. These are peas. And now we don't eat them like a pea. We eat them like little greens. And so when they're about three inches tall, we eat them. And these are sunflower seeds. And those are going to grow into little plants that are about three inches tall when we eat them. Now you'll notice that those are a lot bigger than the little salad green mix. And so I'm going to use a little bit different product for planting those. So I will talk about that later. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually plant the salad mix in here. But I have a better way than just pouring these on here. I have this shaker. It's like a salt shaker kind of thing, except with bigger holes. And so I'm just going to sprinkle these quite closely all up and down here. So you can come in close, take a look. I'm going to try to do it as evenly as I can, and I'm hoping that you can see how close together the seeds are. They're really close, and I'll show you later when they start growing how they're just like a carpet of green, like a little lawn of green. You can see this is not really hard work. <laughs> Nor does it take a long time. And if you miss a spot, it's no big deal. So I know because I've measured it out before, that's about one tablespoon of seeds. Now I'm going to add a few radish seeds just because I have a lot of them. And I bought these years ago for making radish sprouts. But they add a light, nice little hot, spicy. I just kind of sprinkle them around ram randomly. I don't want that to be the dominant one. I just have a few of them in here. Okay, so now I'm going to, I don't have to cover these seeds. That's an important thing because they're, they're just going to sprout in a couple of days. So I have a spatula where I just press down just a little bit to flatten it. Now, of course, you could use your hands, but this does a better job. I did it with my hands in the beginning, but then I'd have the seeds sticking to my hands. And all I'm doing is just kind of pressing it down so that it will be, the seeds will be um, making good contact with the soil. I didn't mention that the soil needs to be moist when you put it in. You don't want it to be all dry and powdery. And then my job is going to be for the next couple of days to make sure that it stays moist. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do right now, move these seeds out of the way because I don't want to get them wet. I'm going to use a little spray bottle and spray the top of these seeds. Because I want them to be nice and moist. And of course, the, the soil was a little bit moist before I started. So that's enough. Now, <clears throat> these don't need to be in the light yet until they actually sprout and they're up maybe, I don't know, quarter or half an inch. So it's actually helpful for them to stay in the dark for a couple of days two or three days. And the way I do that is I just use one of these trays and I put it upside down over this. And you can use the one with the holes in it or either one. It's dark enough. And then I'm just going to set that any place I want out of my way. And I just peek at it and say nice things. Hi there. Every day. They like it. And so once they start to sprout, they're going to look just, well, I'll show you in a couple of days. Um, but this also helps to keep the humidity in here, which is helpful because you don't want them to dry out. If they do dry out, 
then you need to spray them again. That's all there is to it. I'll show you the next stage later. So now what I want to show you is how do you plant, what do you need to do to plant these bigger seeds? And the first thing you need to do is um, soak them in water for about 10 or 12 hours, something like that. So I've already soaked these. They've been soaked, they soaked last night. And this is actually a little sprouting container, which you don't need. You can just use a jar or something. Um, but I'm gonna show you how different they look after they're soaked. So difference. These have not only are they darker, but they're a lot larger. And the soaking overnight is going to help them to sprout a lot faster. I'm going to show you the difference now between the peas that are soaked and the ones that are not soaked. Twice as big at least. After they soak overnight, then I just rinse them about twice a day and you know pour water in them and then pour it out so that they're not sitting in water and in a couple of days you'll notice that they're growing little sprouts on them and that's when i plant them and so i'll show you that step later <laughs> Hello, I'm back. It's the next day, and I'm going to plant those bigger seeds, the peas and the sunflowers. So night before last, they soaked overnight, and then I drained the water off, and then they spent all day yesterday, and so far until now, today, um, sprouting. And I'm gonna show you, you can come up closer. I'm gonna show you these adorable little sprouts. Aren't they beautiful? And yesterday when I showed them to you, they had swelled up a lot. They'd soaked up a lot of water, but they hadn't started to grow yet. So the reason I'm sprouting them like this is because if I just planted the hard, dry seeds, it would take them a long time to sprout. But when they're already sprouted and I put them in the, um, I plant them, then it doesn't take very long for them to come up. So I'm going to show you the sunflower seeds now. And they don't have such long sprouts. But all those little white parts that you can see, those are the sprouts that are just starting to come out. And so they don't need to be any longer than that in order to really um, grow quickly. So if you remember, the ones that I did yesterday, the little tiny seeds, I did not cover them with soil. I sprinkled them on the top and pressed them in, and that's all I did. Now, these are such big seeds that if I did that, they I don't know what they do. They probably just dry up. So I am going to actually sprinkle them around and then cover them with soil just very lightly. So I'm going to make half of a container of peas and half of sunflower seeds because they get so big. And that you're going to see that just like with the little tiny seeds, I'm planting them really close together, like almost touching. This was one third of a cup of peas. I didn't get this very even. I've got a hump in my, I don't think they care as long as they're in the soil. I'm gonna try to make this pretty, kind of an even imaginary line here. It might not be a complete half of it, but close enough. And I'm gonna keep you in the loop so you can watch them grow. But let's sprinkle these others on the other half mm -hmm. now. So black on top of dark brown is kind of hard for you to see probably, but it's a big pile of them. And they're gonna be, again, super thick. Now this actually was a full cup of sunflower seeds. That was only a third of a cup. And the little seeds that I did yesterday, one tablespoon. So, you know, you have to buy bigger amounts of these if you want to grow these. These plants get much bigger and sturdier, and so that's why I don't 
um, make a whole tray of each of them. And by the way, you don't need to make a whole tray of things. If you want to try it just with a small container to start with, you don't have to go to the store and buy one of these, but you're going to love so much that you're going to want to do, th do it this way. Okay, so now I'm going to cover these with some more of my soil. And again, this happens to be pro mix, but just going to cover them barely. And as you can imagine, it won't take them long to come up through there since they already have little sprouts on them. I can't wait to show you what they look like. They look like this uprising, like, I don't know, like some weird freaky thing coming, piling up out of the ground because they're so densely planted. If you were planting these in the garden, you know, they'd be many inches apart, not just stuck together, just almost touching. Got a little bit more here. It's easier to see if I have them covered at this end because at this end, it's hard to see the darkness. Okay, that looks about right. I'm gonna pat this down again like I did yesterday. Gently, I don't wanna hurt any of the little sprouts. So the difference between microgreens and sprouts is that with sprouts, some people use those terms interchangeably, but sprouts, um, you you don't let them grow green leaves on them. You just let them grow, just the root system starts to grow, and then you eat the whole root and all. Where, and of course they're small. But with these, we're gonna eat the green leafy part and we're not going to eat the roots because the roots are going to make a mat in here. So if you remember from yesterday, they like the dark. So I'm going to cover them up like this for a day or two, and I'll keep peeking at them. And they do love attention, too. I know you're happy that you started growing, and it's going to get more and more fun. Okay. So I will show you when everybody starts sprouting. So you see the uprising, that's what I call these guys. This is the um, sunflowers and the peas, and these are the ones that I planted two days ago. Okay, so this is what the little tiny microgreens look like on day three. So here we have the peas and the sunflower seeds that have I planted four days ago. Growing fast. So here are our, our small microgreens. They've been in here for five days so far. I'm going to stick my finger in so you can see how tall they are. So that tall. All right. So it's been two more days now and so i planted this tray six days ago and these are the peas and the sunflowers and you can see they're really getting up here and you see all the little black heads that they have on them which is the the shells of the seeds and so some of them are going to fall off on their own and some of them i'm going to end up having to take off by hand but i'm going to let them grow a couple more days before we do anything with them but you see they're growing fast and so now come over to this tray and these, the little greens I planted these seven days ago and it's kind of hard to see um, how thick that is. So I'll stick my finger in again and so to about there in the middle they're not as tall as the edges but um, so it's seven days I could actually harvest some of these by snipping and cutting them off with scissors. I'm going to let them grow for a couple of more days. All right.
right, so here it is. These are the sunflowers, and it's been eight days since I planted those. You see their little pops are ready to pop off. I wish they'd all pop off because I have to pull some of them off. And the peas, after eight days, I'm going to stick my hand in so you can see how deep it is. It goes all the way up to my probably about five inches. So that's eight days. And then these are the little microgreens, the salad greens, and they've been planted for nine days. I'll stick my finger in there. So, so pretty far. They are ready to harvest. So that was it. Stop share. All right. Something's still playing. You can probably hear that too. I wonder what that is. Uh, That's us right there. I know, but I hear some music playing and I don't know what that is. Uh -oh. It's your YouTube video, Delisa. Yeah, I'm trying to find it so I can shut it off. Okay, there. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let me see if I can get back to you. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Let's see if I can find you now. Okay. You see me? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, you got to see it happens fast. And so this is now 10 days for I planted these. Now, the 10 days uh, number is actually from the time I planted the seeds. I soaked them first and let them sprout for a day. So I actually, uh, you know, the whole process takes a little bit more than the 10 days, although these were ready to harvest. These are huge. I don't know why they're so big. They don't usually get this big this fast. But I'm gonna just show you how I, how I harvest them. And I don't harvest them all at once. I, I usually start when they're not quite this big. And then I, you know, I would just harvest a few at a time and I let them just keep growing. But if they are getting really big, then, and you wanna harvest them all at one time, you can do that. Let's see, is this pointed down? You see? Okay, so I just grab some and cut them off. And I've got a handful of beautiful greens. So this makes quite a lot of food. If you were going to buy microgreens at the store, it would be really expensive. They sell them, you know, in kind of a specialty item. And uh, you know, like fancy restaurants and things, they'll use microgreens. But if you are growing your own, it's not that expensive to, let's see, is, I can't tell how good the light is. Can you see that okay? Yeah, I think you can. Mm -hmm. All right, so probably what I'll do since these are already so big and I kind of waited to, I didn't want to harvest them before you got to watch the great unveiling. Um, I'll probably cut them all and then I'll just put them in a like a Ziploc gallon size bag and keep them in the refrigerator and then just use them in my salad. Um, and then these guys, these can still get taller, the sunflower seeds, but there's still some of these black tops on them, the shells. And it's, it's a little bit tedious. I picked off a lot of them last night just so we wouldn't have so many. But it's the same thing with these. Um, I just take a little handful and cut them down close and there will usually be a few of the shells in them and then you have to pick those off. Now the greens mostly are very clean and don't need to be washed except for the sunflower seeds because coming up through and having the black uh, shell on them I will 
actually put these in my salad spinner to make sure I get all the dirt off just because I don't want to taste the grit. <laughs> but I don't, I don't wash these other ones or the little microgreens. So anyway, um, I'm going to let the sunflowers grow a little bit longer because they can, you know, they can get taller than this. They could get, you know, equally tall. And then sometimes, not all the time, sometimes I'll get a second growth of the ones that I've cut off here. It's never thick and lush in the same way as it is now. But while I'm eating on this batch, because it makes so much, and I usually don't eat it just by itself. I usually add it to all my other you know, the lettuce and other salad greens that I have, plus everything. So it's part of a whole big salad. Uh, but anyway, by the time I'm finished eating this, there may be another little crop that I can harvest before I end up then dumping out the whole tray and starting over. So when I'm dumping out the tray, what I'm dumping out is the soil that is like this big mat with all the roots in it. And so where I dump it is in my compost, my outdoor compost. So I'll put this one back and grab the little salad greens. Tip that down where hopefully you can see that okay. Now, this, these are just little delicate ones compared to the others. I'll just start in the middle here. And just tiny little things. But there's millions of them, and you need to be careful not to pull them up and get some of the potting mix on it, or else it'll taste gritty. I guess you know what I'm doing. But um, I really like the mix of doing these tender little greens, which are most of them are um, cruciferous vegetables, all the different cabbage family, and so they are really, really super nutritious with the sulforaphanes, cancer-fighting kinds of um, things. And there, you know, there's a, a little bit of spiciness, but don't be afraid of that term spicy. Even if you don't like spicy food, this is not that spicy. But, um, so I'll use a combination of this and my larger ones, along with the the greens that I, other things like lettuce. So this is the same as the uh, peak in terms of they may grow a few more, not really as dense or lush, but a few more greens. So I'll just work at eating these. I won't cut them all yet, but if they start getting a little too tall, and the way I determine if they're too tall is if they're uh, getting more of the, their true leaves. These are actually just their cotyledons, which is just the, the first little, they look like leaves, but they're just covering the seed. Um, and then they start to get a little bit tougher and a little bit more, you know, more stem and less leaf. So if it does that, then I, and I haven't eaten them all yet, then I'll just cut them all off, put them in a Ziploc bag and keep them in the refrigerator and they'll keep you know, you don't add, don't wash them or anything because they're too delicate. If you washed them, then you'd have a hard time getting them dry enough and then they would probably just mold. But um, it actually is a super easy process. I just keep doing it. And then when I get toward the end, I may have a few more that have grown back, but then I'm ready to dump these. And if I'm really on top of it, which sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not, I will have started a couple of new trays but so that by the time these are done, I have those to eat. And it's not really a time consuming thing, as you can see in the video. If you can see these, let's see, I don't, can't really tell what you can see, but there are a few of these that are taller. Can you, can you see those taller ones? Those are the radishes, the ones that I just sprinkled in, because they're the first ones that come up, and they are the ones that have a little bit more of like the radish spicy taste. So I'm gonna move these back. Cool. So um, let's uh, have some questions, if you have any, about it. The only thing I didn't talk about was watering. And so um, 
in the beginning, I just use my spray bottle and spray it to keep it moist. But then as it get the, the root and the leaves get a little bit bigger, then they require a little bit more water. And so then I just, you know, it's a little bit easier to water with a little bottle. And the reason I like to use the double tray that one inside of the other one is then I don't have to worry about overwatering because you don't want the roots to be sitting in water and you don't want them to dry out either. But as long as you've got the tray with the holes nested inside the other tray, if there is extra water, it can just drain through and you won't have a problem. If you just plant them in the single tray without holes, then you need to be a little bit more on your guard about not overwatering. So you can tell if they are starting to need water because after they've grown up enough so that you can see they've got leaves on them, they'll start drooping if they need water. And then I was like, oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's some water, quick. <laughs> and it takes them a little bit of time to perk back up, but they do. So it's not the end of the world. But I find that I have to water them pretty much every day once they get going because it's just really there's just a lot growing in there it's just complete as you can see just complete covered with and they can't go down into deep soil like out in nature so they're depending upon us to keep them the right moisture um, i keep that cover over them for the first couple of days to keep them in the dark but then once they start to sprout and actually have leaves on them then i take the cover off and let them get light. And um, if you have one of these plastic covers, you can put that on after you take the dark one off to help hold the moisture in for a couple of days until they get too tall. And then you have to take these off because they can't handle this if it's too. But anyway, that, that helps to keep the humidity in a little bit so that you don't have to water quite as much. But really, that's all you do. After you plant them, you just keep your eye on them, give them some love and appreciation. They really do like that. And some light. Now, I am very fortunate because I have all these lights and shelves, because that's an important part of my life. Um, but if you don't, if you just have a, a pretty decent window, at this time of the year, you won't have any trouble growing them. I've seen other people growing them just, you know, in a window with pretty good light. They will, they'll get, if they have less light, they'll get taller and not quite as leafy. We call that leggy, but um, that's still okay. I did as an experiment, I tried growing them without extra light like that for a while. Um, and in the winter, they, they're pretty spindly. They, they really need some additional light. But just any kind of fluorescent light is good enough. You don't have to have some special grow light or anything. So uh, that's what. So um, if you have a question, let's hear it. Just yeah, I go. OK, I see Betty has her hand up. Unmute yourself, Betty. Yes, I wondered, Delisa, how long on your small seeds, how long from plant date until final harvest? What is the length of time? It was 10 days today. Okay. And what about the larger seeds? Was that longer or was that? Nope, that was nine, that's been nine days. Nine days, okay. But two days before that was when I soaked them. Right, but then I mean, when, I'm, I mean, when do you f finish eating them is sort of what I'm saying. Does it take like two? Like, oh. like from the first day that you planted them until you think you're done with the tray, what would you say that would be? Well, that's completely up to how many, how yeah. many you want to eat them. But yeah. um, just curious. There was a period of time that I used only those and I didn't add any lettuce or spinach or anything. And I would use them up in a week easily. Oh, uh, okay. But if I, if I, dole them out and I just add them to my other greens. Mm -hmm. They could last for a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, who else has a question? Marie, just unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Did you unmute? Uh, okay, I, yes, I unmuted. Okay. Uh, okay, can you hear now? Yes, I can. Okay, I was wondering about sources to get the, um, the microgreens. Uh, you know, you mentioned um, the one that you use. Will Mill and Feed sell the seeds as micro um, uh, for salad mix like that? You know, I don't know. There might be somebody here that knows. Um, you can use any kind of garden seeds. However, they'll be way more expensive because they sell oh. little seed packs like like right. And there's what um, one point five grams. <laughs> So, and that's $1.79 and that was in 2017. So it'd be over $2. It'd be very expensive to do it. So you yeah, want more, it's less than a, a tablespoon inside that little packet, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But you should actually call around. I know that there's a store in Wasilla called All About Herbs that does sell some microgreen seeds. Um, I haven't bought them there because I've just bought, you know, a big supply of them at one time from true leaf and so i don't have to order very often uh, is does here no of a local place to buy them if so just unmute and let us know did you have your hand up matt um yeah i was gonna just ask a few questions but oh, yeah, okay. one was where to buy stuff but i said yeah, i don't really know that you said um amazon is where you get your microgreens is that what you said or i got them from directly from true north True, true Leaf Market. True Leaf, okay. But I first found out about them from Amazon because okay. Amazon was selling them on there. Um, okay. But then I just went directly through True Leaf. And I, after I found out yesterday that True Leaf is getting sold out on some things, I went to Amazon to see if they had any others. And they do, some other brands. And um, I, I don't know what the variety is. There's way more varieties than what I use. So I have this little container that I use to start my seeds for my tower garden. I guess I could use it to do the same thing. There's no perforations in the bottom, but um, you know I could put soil in there and start them and water them carefully and then put the Absolutely. lid on. Absolutely. And, and then I'm thinking, I don't have a good place with lights, but I can maybe store it down there at the base down here somewhere, you know. Yeah. Some good and, light. And you can also just use the, your, your window light at this time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Since we're getting a lot of light these days. Yep, at this time of year, we're okay. Uh, you cool. don't have to use a special planting tray. I have a lot of them because I grow a lot of my own start for the garden. But you can just use a like a any kind of a plastic tray or glass or something. Um, it's a tofu tub. You couldn't grow very much in there, but you, you could yeah. do that. True. Yeah, yeah, I see. yeah, okay. And do you ever do you ever do any sprouting where you, you don't use any soil? I used to, but once I started doing this, like I this better. So much more food from this. I see, yeah, because the sprouts you only get the little bit of root for each seed. So right. Yeah. Which and they're super nutritious and I love them. And yeah. I have my little sprouting containers, mm -hmm. but I just you know, I mean I get a ton of food from this. It's okay. amazing. Cool. Thanks yeah. for sharing. And there's a lot of other things that you can grow. And if you go to trueleafmarket.com, they also have a lot of information. And you can see if you click on the microgreens tab, the drop down menu, and you can click on those and read the instructions about how to grow each thing. Uh -huh. And so um, some of them are a little bit harder to grow. And so I only grow easy ones. <laughs> and Haley has some little uh, um, black beans that she sprouted the other day. Oh yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. So, do you think Fred Meyer has like soil bags right now where you could just yep. go buy a little bit of soil? Yes. Okay. And Anne, are, are you still on here, Anne? Yes, and guys, I told Delisa that Fred Meyer has got a whole bunch of the things that you need for this okay. on sale at the moment. Okay. So they have the planting trays. I don't think they have the ones with the holes, do they, Anne? 
Um, no, they, they didn't. Okay. Um, but they have a whole bunch of other things. And you can actually punch your old holes in, can't you, Delisa? Sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Agree. absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you don't technically have to have that, but that's just a safeguard. And I, I like that because I, I want to have success, you know. I don't want to find out that, oh, man, they drowned, you know. And it's not too often that I, I actually checked. I picked up my, out, my inner tray to see if there was water sitting in the bottom yesterday just because I knew I was going to be talking to you about this. And there wasn't any water down there. So I, it's probably not something that I would have a big problem with, but if you do, it's not an easy problem to fix. Once you've overwatered and you don't have holes, you're just going to basically cause those guys to rot out. And so it would be, I, I don't want to have that happen. <laughs> So, but you could just be careful with your watering, or you can just poke your own holes. But you know, Alaska Millen feed is another yeah. place that you can. Cool. Get. And I don't know whether they have the microgreens oh, or not, patient. but they're likely to. Wow. <laughs> I hear somebody. <laughs> okay, who else has a question about this or comment or whatever? Hello there. Um, so I was just about the seeds being sent um they would be frozen if it has a negative effect seeds or no. Like nope who was that was that mary yeah it's me it's it's an uh, okay that's fine i just wanted to see what happened. no and and i've already commented somebody asked about the lighting um at this time of year i think you're going to be okay just with a, a window but if you want to keep growing in the winter which is really a great idea um i would get at least you know some kind of a a fluorescent type light that you can have they're not it's like super fussy but to get the best results, you know, they do need more light than just ambient light in a winter setting. Does it matter if the seeds freeze, if being sent to you by mail? Um, it's likely the case for Fairbanks. No, that's how I've gotten all mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so has anybody soil or containers? have to wade through thigh high snow to my shed to get my containers otherwise i was going to do it this weekend and i know it's still deep oh, yeah. snow here too um yeah i i think you could get them at fred meyer and if you have a garden store you could get them um so you could certainly get started with that while you're waiting to for your shed to... <laughs> hi delisa this is linda hi linda hi um when you're done with your harvest and you go compost your roots and stuff do you have to rinse those trays out or do you, you just kind of make sure they stay dry and then go for it again or well technically you should wash them out just so that you don't you know if there's any disease or coronavirus <laughs> i don't think there's any coronavirus but anyway just you know that's a good practice to always wash them out i have always done it i have to admit i don't always do it but um one nice thing about these is that and I mentioned you don't need any super garden soil that's full of compost and everything. The cheapest garden mix that you can find works because they have all the nutrients they need right from the seed itself. And so you don't need to add any other food. They're getting all the food they need from the seed itself. Now that's when you are planting things that are gonna be, that you're gonna grow longer, then you do need to start feeding them. So I'm going to show you um, some of my flowers here. Just a second. Hi, Tom. So I planted these four weeks ago, and they're different kinds of flowers. And 
And so I'm planting them in the same kind of pro mix. The pro mix has some mycorrhizal fungi and things like that, but you know, there's not enough soil in each pot. You know, there's these little cells. And so there's not much soil here. And so they really use up whatever food there is. And so then they're going to start to need to be fed. Um, Cause I can't plant these for a while, obviously. We have a lot of snow on our ground too. And so these are probably gonna be in a pot in the house until mid-May or even end of May, depends on the weather. So they're gonna have to be fed. And so you have different options for what you want to feed them. And you can just buy like some dry kelp mix. Uh, it's a powdered kelp and just mix that with water and um, just use that as a food. You can buy, of course, I only do organic. You, I guess you'd have the option of putting chemicals on, but why ruin something like this with chemicals? Um, so you can buy other organic um, I like kelp because it's vegan. Uh, they do sell like fish emulsion stuff, but I don't really want the fish emulsion on here. So anyway, so you can use kelp. That's a good one. And I'm going to show you this. <laughs> if you live in Palmer Wasilla, this is a kelp based brewed, um, fertilizer mix that you can get for free at, uh, let's see, Southside Garden Center. Is it, I think there's one in Anchorage. Isn't there a Southside Garden Center in Anchorage? I think there is. Yeah, there's a couple or at least one, I know. There's... Okay, well you might check with them because maybe they do the same thing. If you bring your own reusable containers, they will just give you this. And so, um, I just mix this half and half with water, and I've been using that um, for the last week or so on my flowers. And so, you know, they're, these are nasturtiums, and they're already pretty big. I probably started them a little too early because I've got to tend to them for quite a while still. <laughs> But anyway, I, I was in the mood to plant flowers. I haven't planted my vegetable seeds yet that go outdoors, and I was gonna show you how I do that today. These are some kind of sunflower. I got a seed packet in the mail for free as part of a promotion of some charity. And you know how you get these free things, how that goes. And, and I've never planted, I, I always plant sunflowers that go out in the garden, but they've never looked like this before. So I have no idea what they're going to look like, but they, they look healthy. <laughs> they look like they're going to be really big in a couple of months. <laughs> so does anybody have any more questions? I'm going to show you how I plant my, um, my vegetable uh, seeds that are going to go out in the garden, but First, let's finish with the microgreens, if anybody has any other questions. Delisa, this is Amy. Okay. Thanks for having this. Sure. Have you uh, tried broccoli seeds? I haven't ever grown them by themselves, but they're part of my mix. Okay, so that salad mix has broccoli in it? Yep. Okay, th thank you. You could do all broccoli seeds. Um, yeah, one thing that I did this year was I used a lot of my old seeds that were like five years old or longer because, you know, when I buy my seed packets that I'm going to put in the garden, then I don't use them all. And so I save them from year to year. And after a, a certain length of time, then I decide, well, I guess I'll buy some new ones. So in, this year, I looked at them and anything that was older than 2015, I just dumped all the seeds <coughs> in a little bowl, and then I used those as my microgreen mix, and they grew, and that's what, these guys have already been harvested, 
but that was all my old garden seeds that I decided not to throw out. I was going to see what would happen if I planted them as microgreens. And it worked. Which probably I could have just as well planted them in the garden. But, you know, I just, I don't want to take a chance on my seeds not doing well in the garden because then, of course, those guys get big and huge and I want to make sure they're really healthy. Anybody else have a microgreen type question? Are you guys inspired? How many of you are going to plant some microgreens? <laughs> good, good. Okay. So now I'm going to show you just how you plant. It's not any big mysterious thing, but how you decide what to plant and how you plant them. Um, if you wait until summer, you can plant a lot of seeds out in your garden or just in a pot outside. But I always like to start mine early in the house so that when it's warm enough to plant outside, I've got some little bedding plants. And you save a ton of money by growing your own rather than buying all of them at the nursery. Now, of course, the easy thing to do is go to the nursery and buy these gorgeous plants. And I'm wondering what's going to happen with that this year. I don't know what's going to happen. I know I'm going to have a bunch of plants in the house. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to plant some basil. And I always plant tons of kale. Now, basil doesn't grow outside in Alaska. I don't care what somebody tells you, it doesn't grow outside in Alaska. You can grow it in a greenhouse or I just grow mine in my house, in the sunroom. And there's a lot of different varieties, but what, if you haven't ever gardened, I'm just going to talk about what to look for on the package when you're making a decision. So, you know, the front is going to just tell you what the name of it is, but then when you turn it over on the back, you're going to get a lot of information like this is an annual. It means it only grows for one year and then it's done as opposed to a perennial, which keeps growing. It tells you how tall it's going to get. It says height 12 to 18 inches and tells you a little bit about it. And then directions for short season climates. That would be us, you know, although we're not going to plant outdoors. We're just going to plant them inside. It tells you the spacing, how much room you need and then how much to thin them. So you kind of need to know these things because for instance, if you're planting kale, it gets really big. And I plant mine about 18 inches apart. Yeah. There are some people who plant them closer to that and they're just jammed in. But I let mine get, you know, really spread out and so that they can get to their full size. And the way I know that if I don't just have experience, is I read the back of the packet and it tells me, so it tells me how close to plant them, tells me how deep to plant them, and also how much, you know, when to thin them and how far apart they need to be. If you plant things too close together, like with my microgreens, you would never do that outside because then they would get so crowded that they couldn't mature and, you know, fill out. So you need to give them space when they're outside. So I'm going to plant some things in these. These are the little cells. There's six. These are actually the, the bigger size pots. I'm going to show you. Uh, some things in these. There's six in here too, but they're little tiny ones. And so the chances are I'm gonna to have to transplant those into a bigger pot before they go outside. And I don't really wanna do more work than necessary. But if it's getting close to planting outside time and you wanna just start them in the house, you could. So you read the back of the packet, this says, sow seeds as soon as the soil can be worked in early spring. That's if you're working outside. And basically that tells you that they probably can withstand some frost. But um, some things can withstand frost, some things can't. And if they can't, they'll usually tell you, they say, you know, be, after all chance of frost is passed. Um, then it says, sow them six inches apart. 
and cover them with one eighth of an inch of fine soil pressed down and then transplant or oh, thin to 18 to 24 inches apart in rows two to three feet apart. And it says they germinate in one to two weeks depending upon the weather and the soil warmth. In the house, they're gonna germinate way faster than that. I will say eh, definitely less than a week, maybe three or four days. So these seeds are little tiny ones, just like the ones that I, the microgreen seeds. I don't, you probably can't see my hand. Anyway, they're tiny. I'm just gonna put two seeds on each cell, two or three, and then I'm going to thin those out by just leaving one seed on there um, because I want these plants, as opposed to the microgreen plants, to have some space. Now it says to plant them an eighth of an inch deep. Now I know from the microgreens that I wouldn't actually have to do that because I didn't with the microgreens and they still grew. But what it does for me if I do cover them very lightly is it gives me a little bit of protection from drying out. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, a tiny bit of other soil. And again, mine is pro mix. If you're using a lot of, of this, this is the a cheaper way to go because the pro mix comes in a great big bale and it costs around $50, but it's, it's a lot. But you, unless you're planting a lot of things, you don't need that. You can just get whatever garden soil you have in your Fred Meyer or something. So I'm just gonna pat that down gently. And I'm not gonna actually plant all of my kale for this year until later because kale uh, gets big pretty fast and I won't be able to plant it out in the garden for a while. But I just wanted to do that to show you. Um, I've made the mistake before of planting too early and then it's like my plants are really big and they need to go out in the garden and the garden's still under the snow, you know? So anyway, but the basil is gonna stay in the house. So it doesn't really matter when I plant it. Um, and the basil is slower to germinate. It's also, if I read the seed packet, it's the same thing. It, it asks for like an eighth of an inch of soil to cover it. And again, I could just leave it on the top and make sure that it doesn't dry out, but I will lightly cover it. Okay. And you can grow basil year-round in your house, but you will need to have light for it. It won't do well if you don't have light. So I'm gonna, oh, another thing that's important to do is to mark these so you know what you've planted. So you get those little plastic or wooden stakes to stick in your, soil. I'll show you what I... like these guys because you want to say what it is and then I also have a little notebook where I write down what I planted how many I planted when I you know so that I have a record of it so I'm gonna mark these and put the date on it so that I know when I planted them. I didn't mention that um, for the microgreens, but I always put a little, like a little sticky note on the side of the tray to, sh to just tell me when the planting date was. You don't have to do that, um, but I'm always curious how long it takes to, to see. But if you don't do that, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna know when they're ready to pick, because they look like they are. Okay, so I'm gonna spray these. And these have holes in the bottom. Can you see that? So these go right into a tray 
that is solid. So these are already designed so that you don't need to worry about overwatering them. All of these, these little cell things that you buy, what are called cells, these, they always have holes in the bottom. So if you're growing these, all you need is the trays that are solid for while they're in the house. It's the microgreens that I want to have the holes in, not, not these. So I'm going to cover this for a while. Doesn't need to be in the light. This is just going to um, keep the moisture in so I don't need to worry about whether I need to water it. You can tell when it needs water uh, when it's like this because it gets lighter. The, the soil looks lighter. All right, any questions about this? Yes, go ahead. Uh, you need to unmute yourself. Can you hear now? Yes. Okay, I was wondering about the water. I understand, um, you know, chlorine tap water is not good. Um, right. And I don't have a well, I'm in town. So would you recommend uh, like putting water in a five gallon uh, bucket and then uh, to, uh, to like, what is it called? Off gassing or whatever the chlorine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be a good thing to do. Um, or you might, if you have a filter at your house, that would be a good thing for you to do anyway, just to, okay. so you're not drinking, you know, if right. you filter it to get that out. Yeah, that's, that's true. The water can be an issue. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, it's Mary with a question. Okay. Um, so the seedling containers, the smaller ones you just showed with the little porous holes and you know, like six packs and so forth. So we have a mineral here where I am, and I'm just wondering if you reuse your container here, um, just clean them with soap and water and reuse them, or do you start fresh? Because um, okay, I'm having a little bit of trouble. Um, it sounds like your sound is cutting out, but you're wondering if I reuse something. What was it? I'm sorry, um, if you reuse the seedling containers. Um, These? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, I sure do. I wash them out and I reuse them. So the whole process isn't very expensive at all. Once you have a supply of them and you can just reuse them, you have to buy new soil every year. Well, unless you have some left from last year, but you don't have to buy new seeds every year. Um, because unless you grow an awful big amount, uh, you, you don't use up what's in a seed packet in a given year. So you can still use them for a few years after that. You don't have to buy anything. So yeah, I don't buy anything new. I buy a new thing of pro mix about once a year. And then that lasts me all year long for all of my planting. Fifty pounds. And by the way, you don't need to have a big garden area to get started. Um, I think that's one thing that stops people is they think that it's too, that has to be, you know, a big project. It doesn't have to be. You can just have a pot out on your deck, your porch, your steps, whatever you have, and and grow some kale or some lettuce or something like that. And and it's just amazing to be part of that process. It's just so rewarding to be part of the process and, and watch them grow mm -hmm. a little and give them lots of love. So, yeah, so don't let yourself be stopped by thinking that you have to have this huge yard with this huge garden that you have to, you know, do all these things right and get all your soils tested and bring in all your amendments. You can just buy some potting soil, put it in a pot, stick a few seeds in it and hope for the best and it, magic happens. And then you learn as you go. You don't have to know everything. So you can get started very inexpensively and very easily. And once you do a little bit, then you'll do a little bit more. I have one more question. Sure. I was, if you grow the microgreens outside in the summer? No, I still grow them in the house. Um, let's see, maybe I put some on my deck for a while. I grew them all summer um, because even though I had uh, other, 
you know, a whole big garden full of other greens. I just like the microgreens a lot. And so I mix them in with other things, but um, yeah. Thank you much for all of this. Really appreciate it. Thank sure. you. Sure. And oh, Susan says, Hamama is the name of the company that sells the pre-planted seeds. It is more expensive, but the need for dirt is eliminated. And if you look that up online, H-A-M-A-M-A, -A you can see it's super simple. It comes as a kit, you put the water in, and all the seeds are pre-planted in a little, I don't know what it's called, but anyway, that's a mat. And you just put that in and you don't need to buy any soil or anything. It does cost more money, but then super easy. And then they grow. And compared to buying microgreens, it would see, certainly be a lot, a lot um, cheaper. Let's see. I'm trying to see if there's any questions on here. Oh, somebody just ordered seed. Oh, Matt. Oh, good for you. All right. All right, anybody else have any questions? Okay, well, thank you for joining me. I really had fun. I'm gonna um, put the recording, uh, I'll send out a link to the recording, which will be on YouTube, and you can watch it again. If you need to have a review of how to grow your microgreens, you'll be able to watch it again. And feel free to get in touch with me if you have questions, I'm happy to help. Delisa, I have one question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, for container gardening, um, are there any specific lettuces or kales that are better or worse? I think they're all great. Okay. <laughs> that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you plant in a container, you just have to be aware that it does, the, the plant doesn't have access to the earth at large. <coughs> so you're going to need to make sure that you do feed your plants because they have a limited supply of nutrients that are in that soil. And I would just feed them the same kind of thing that I'm feeding them here. I don't use any chemical fertilizers or anything like that, but just maybe some kelp mix or something like that. You don't have to do that right away, but they will use up the nutrients that are in the soil. Of course, they can use up the nutrients in a garden if things are planted kind of close together too. So, I mean, we do need to feed our gardens. So, anybody else have any questions or comments? Sure. Where did you say the video would be posted? I will send you a link to it in an email, and but it will be on YouTube. Um, I have my YouTube channel, Delisa Renadeo, and um, and it'll be a public. You know, you can share it with people. It's not anything private here. So, uh, but I will send you a link to it. So I just want to say thank you so much and that this uh, coronavirus has been a hidden blessing for me because I've never been able to partake in the Alaska Veg Society events. And I'm especially grateful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Let's see, PJ says your hand is up. Yeah, how are you doing? Great. I can't figure out how to do the, um, get a picture up there. Anyway, Promix, oh. who carries the Promix? You, can, you can't see me or I, I, I just... I can't see you. I can't, I, I'm not showing up. Right. I'll bet you need to go down to the I bottom. I have to go to the settings screen. somewhere and it says I have to, I have to go out and then come back in. So I didn't want to do that. So I have to do it. I'm just figuring out Zoom. It's okay. new. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so you... Promix. Question was about Promix. Who who carries the Promix? Um, the garden supply stores will have that. Okay. It comes in a like a forty pound. It, it's it's right. shrink wrapped in plastic and it's dry when it comes in and it's like there's a it's a lot of stuff. If yeah. you are in the valley, they also sell it at um, well they sell it at the South Side Garden Store and they sell it at Three Bears. Um, they don't sell it at Fred Meyer. I don't think they sell it at Home Depot or Lowe's. No, I'm sure I have not seen it in those places, so. Yeah, but they would sell it at the, the there's a garden store in Anchorage, the Southside Garden. Oh, and I'm sure they probably sell it at um, uh, Alaska Mill and Feed. I haven't bought it there, but I'd be shocked if they didn't have it. 
Yeah, I've always kind of gotten the miracle grow stuff, but um, yeah. 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 And even Costco, they don't sell the pro mix, but they sell big bags of planting materials. Right, that's what I've gotten before, but the yeah. pro mix is an organic, better right, product. Right, right, yeah. I'm up in my game these days. <laughs> there you go. Yep, the more we learn, the better we can do. Right, thank you. Sure, Marie. Um, this is uh, something I, I was uh, told about um, when I went to a valley um, class a few years ago about making uh, pesto out of chickweed. And uh, of course, basil's put in that too. Um, have you ever kind of had any interest in like using ch chickweed to make, you know, pesto? Well, I haven't used it for making pesto, but I use chickweed just, I, okay. you know, cut off a little, it's kind of like my my garden microgreens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it does. Although I have mulch on my garden that keeps it from growing too prolific. <laughs> yeah, when we get closer to summer, if we're still doing these things, um, which we might as well keep doing, I'm actually planning, if, if things open up, I'm going to do some like one day retreat types of things that where we can come out and do some things in the garden and do some connecting with nature and with plants and um, harvesting and preparing a vegan meal to share together. Um, so I'm planning to have some one day events like that this summer if that's allowed. <laughs> if not, I guess we'll just do these things on Zoom. Nice that we're so versatile, and thank you again, Delisa, for offering this. Sure, my pleasure. Anybody else? Okay, well, have fun, you guys. Don't be afraid to try. Um, doesn't cost that much to get started. You don't have to know everything. You know enough to start, so have fun. Thanks, All right. Delisa. Thank you. Bye-bye.